Global Rugby Challenge wraps up here tonight as the Cork Flakers will be taking on Leinster and what's becoming a must-win clash for these two mid-table rivals. Only two spots separate them on the table, but that race for the top four is becoming more and more complex with every single match that goes by. Hello everyone and welcome back along to your home of rugby here with Cork Flake and the GRC, the Global Rugby Challenge, the subscriber series where you guys take the field against the world's elite today. We have the Flakers up against Leinster in the final match of round number nine. And this is a big match too for the Flakers who are under serious pressure to keep their spot inside the top four. And their opponents are sitting in just sixth position. There's a few points between them, however, but it will be the side that splits the two of them, Montpellier, who will be most interested to see how this one goes down. The Flakers, however, sitting fourth and will be wanting to keep that spot there. They could move up potentially as much as second with a big bonus point win here tonight against Leinster. The last couple of rounds have been a bit indifferent here for the Flakers side in round seven. It was a draw, 14 all with cast race, but then they bounced back nicely going up against the Crusaders who pushed them to their limit, just managing to get the job done. 21-14, a victory in round eight for the Flakers to hit back with four points on the board. Today, though, another tough matchup against the sixth place Leinster side. Here is their starting 15 for tonight's matchup with the front row, as per always, Lucas Barrett on the loose head side, and Zaza Kukulsta returns to hooker, and Peter Matthews resumes his spot on the tight head side of the front row. Ian McDonald will once again partner with Chris Smith, in the second row with Francois Valentine, Manuel Valera and Connor Nicholson in the back row for the Flakers. Into the back line and Jim Ali Gino returns with the electric pace and ability at scrum half and he'll partner the ever reliable Owen Richards at fly half. Into midfield will be captain Pierre Valentine at inside centre and the elusive and destructive Michael Gurren will play it outside. On the left wing, Pumas Igbenawania will start in the 11 jumper with the electric try scoring phenomenon that is Prince Mars Williamson on the right with Joshua Barrett starting the fullback for the Flakers looking to put pressure on those top two spots. Now trying to spoil the party will it be Lencer, a team that has had an indifferent season up and down all over the place. At their best, they can challenge the best. And they are pretty much one of the only sides to trouble Montpellier this season and comfortably beat them back in round five. 21 points to eight. And they are the AI team to beat currently. They sit in six through Leinster, as we talked about already in the last couple of rounds. They've had it tough. They've taken on three of the four subscriber sides. And tonight is the final one they will face. And to be fair, they've suffered against them all. The Guardians of the Crypt took them out in round six, 21 points to 14. Then in round seven, the Dragons come along and put the misery on, 31 points to seven. And then the All Flakes in round eight, just last round, it was a thumping. 41 points to 14. Leinster stood no chance to put that one away. They have a very good side. We've talked about it every time we've met this team. It's pretty much Ireland playing in blue. A very good front row. McGrath, Cronin, Farlong. Those guys are up there with the world's elite as well. You've got the Australian Scott Farley in the second row alongside Devin Toner. And of course the back row, Ruddock, Vanderflyer and O'Brien are not to be messed with. The back line equally as impressive as well. McGrath and Sexton will be running the halves. And of course Johnny Sexton one of the world's best number 10s going at this day and time. Into midfield and it's again plenty of excitement and ability with Robbie Henshaw and Gary Ringrose who have caused many teams problems throughout the season. And of course their back three know their way to the try line. James Lowe, Adam Byrne and of course Rob Carney miss a consistent, cool, calm and collected and number 15 for Leinster. They'll be up for this and they'll want to not end their subscriber clashes in a poor way. They got thumped last week and they've really got to bounce back here tonight. Well, round nine all comes to a close tonight with this matchup. The Flake is the final team in action. And, of course, next time we meet is a big, big, big subscriber clash as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. But for now, it is the Flakers versus Leinster. And it is Manuel Valera who drags it in for the first use of the football and sits it up nicely for the phenomenal the try scoring. Prince Mars Williamson, who maybe should have hung on to that. Well, we're giving him all the raps in the intro, and then he's coughed up a, a beautiful kick that's gone flying into the stands, and quite clearly out in the full, not the start he'll be wanting, that is for sure. Sean Cronin will throw to the line out, just a couple of minutes in, and already a mistake there from all the flakers, look at that, Chris Smith well taken, scores it in the middle of the line out, and it is a good turnover there for the flakers, it goes back to Owen Richards, who's 
Gonna take things a bit more calmly now as he thumps us down the throat of Rob Carney, but at least it stayed in the field of play. Our wider goes to Sean O'Brien and turn over! Peter Matthews! Well played there Police. with the tight end prop! Big chance now for the Flakers. Ali Gino goes to Gurren. Out to Zaza Kukulska. Makes the space for him. Can he get the pass away? He does. And for the one, he scores. And the Flakers hit already. Early days. It is 5 0. And promise that Wania is the recipient of the first try. Great play. Zaza Kukulska. Boy, he's had a season and a half, hasn't he? He's hit some highs. He's had some terrible lows. But tonight, he has started off with a hiss and a roar. What a ball out to promising for Noania. And that was where that all lay, didn't it? It was all the question, could Zaza put that ball on Promise's chest? And he answered that, oh, with emphatic fashion. A great pass out towards Winger. And we've seen many a pass go straight from that position for all the sides this season. And a dangerous wing combination. A dangerous back three for the Flakers. Promising Barawania, of course, on the left side. Prince Mars Williamson on the right. And the steady hand of Joshua Barrett at fullback. Here is another steady hand. Mr. Consistent is Owen Richards from the left hand side. A big breeze coming over his shoulders. But he makes no mistake about that at all. And that's what he's been doing all season long. One of the most consistent performers is Owen Richards. And again, he keeps that form up nicely to put his team up 7-0 over Leinster. Johnny Sexton goes long with the kickoff. It's a very good kick to him. Michael Gurren takes it in. He offloads and here Valentine takes it nicely and manages just to hang on. Bit of trouble here. So I just saw Owen Richards go into that breakdown. And it's gone back to Joshua Barrett who's hammering this one into touch and taking no chances at all of that. He saw his fly half, went into the ruck and credit to him for putting his body on the line. But it put pressure on the clearance kick and in the end they've done all right Joshua Barrett handy man to have the boot and Sean Cronin will throw in again they lost the line out last time in this position but this time they now look Leinster and McGrath goes to a bit of a run great off running as well Cronin gets it back he runs straight into his opposite number Kukulska makes the tackle they go short side Luke McGrath doing very well and he finds Jack McGrath the two McGraths combining nicely down the short side pad channel they go again and McGrath once more with room to move James Lowe, it's a nicely back inside. Oh, that's isolated as ever. And the ball is lost from Sean O'Brien. Oh, a turnover back. And a real chance now. It's the backfield. Goes Scott Farney. Oh, Monster. Not what the a hit. And a penalty to boot. He looked unconscious. He went down in that much of a heap. Scott Farney had it all to do. It's a shame we don't get a replay. Because he absolutely hammered on through that hole. But he took on. Big number 15, Joshua Barrett, who said, not on my watch. They clear their way up towards halfway to the Flakers. Just one jumper this time, a three-man line out. McDonald up against Toner, and McDonald grabs it in. Richards gets it back to Mally Gino, and he goes for a bit of a run before going into some heavy traffic, losing the ball. Great turn over there, and there's room outside for Leinster once more. But it's all knocked on. And a vicious high tackle there. Looked like Jack McGraw. I think he's going to take this one. Frustration wearing on the faces of Leinster as they suffer a yellow card first of the match. Knocked on from James Lowe. Oh, Ali Gino picked it up. And he got delivered. A big punishing hit. And option there was for a shot at goal for Owen Richards who flat out refused. And pretty much tall Pierre Valentine. He's kicking for touch. A strong wind. That was not going to help it. He needed something behind him. Deciding to go for touch instead. And Kukulska throws it. Chris Smith in the middle. And Ali Gino fires it out to Owen Richards. He's running. He's got Valentine to his left. Pierre Valentine on no one's home. They all went too wide. Michael Curran goes back. Oh, Peter Matthews. Another high tackle. That time the shot of two. Two yellow cards. Leinster can't believe it. You've got to calm that stuff down, Leinster. That is terrible work. And now they lose. Van der Flyer, he's off to the bin. And this time you'd expect, yes. Owen Richards will take the three on offer. Well, we've seen some sides have really capitulated with the pressure of high tackles this season. And Leinster really are falling apart at the seams here. 
Tom Richards adds the extra three now. It is 10-0. The flank is getting an easy ride upfield after having a bit of pressure on them. And they take a nice three points. Two players in the bin. I'm not sure if one came back when one went off, but either way, it is bad news for Leinster. Johnny Sexton gets us back underway. Tommy goes short. Well taken as well. Running forward under pressure though. The Flakers do well and just managed to secure the ball. No, pop it away to Jim Gino, who's going to hack this one downfield. Tries to get away from Rob Carney. The wind helps nicely, but Carney equal to it. Gets it inside of 22. Pops it back nicely. And Ringrose fires it through the back line. Now it's there for a tiny run from Rulick, but it's just saved there by Leinster. Cronin. Oh, he's got him nicely outside there. Cronin opens up space for Johnny Sexton. Up against one man. There's the man in the back of Joshua Barrett. And he is on to that one once more. He's been solid under pressure from the back. Here is Ringrose once more. Advantage. Oh, it's knocked on that time. Ruddock couldn't handle it. Advantage goes to the Flakers. And now it is there. All of this run from Lucas Barrett. Support out wide. Jamali Chino. Put a 9. 11 or 14 on his back. It won't matter. And the pressure of Yellow is too much for Leinster to handle. Jamali Chino scores. And up to 15 nil we go. Excellent work from Lucas Barrett. The loose head prop. Look at him go. Straight through. Against his opposite front rower and Sean Cronin. And he just seen little Jim Gino floating out wide. The defence was absolutely shattered at that point. And there was no chance they were stopping little Jim as he was gone. Beautiful ball. For a prop to deliver something like that, it's truly spectacular. And Jim Gino will be going a few rounds after this one for his big number one. He'll be loving that with Ali Gino. Another try. Such a capable player. Athletic enough and quick enough to play on the wing. Midfield, fullback even if you had a stretch. But of course, number nine is where he really excels his nippy speed. It's definitely a huge asset for the side. There goes half time at the same time as the conversion. And we will head to the Sheds at 17 0. Leinster are falling in a heap here. Yellow cards have cost some big time. It's our trade trail 17 0 to the Flakers. Celebration there for the Flakers. They know what's going on. They know they're on top. And that's the big thing about this match at the moment. They're dominating possession and territory. 75 and 65% going to the home team. But have a look at that third from last line. Line breaks. That's a really interesting one for me. Two each at this stage. And only two tries for the Flakers. They've really got a pity back up the field, haven't they? From the Leinster penalties that have put them in easy opportunities and managed to get them easy tries from it as well. Being a man or two up at most of this half has been a massive advantage for them and they've taken every single opportunity they could get. Of course, the penalty goal as well puts in that little bit of point of difference. The 14-0 opportunity of a draw is certainly out that window and a 17-0 now. It's a lot of work to do for Leinster to get back into this game. They need a lot of possession and really a lot of territory. They've had the same amount of line breaks, so you've got a question why they aren't scoring the tries themselves. 17-0 halftime score. Leeds still with a lot of work to do, but the Flakers, they'll be wanting two more tries to put themselves in bonus point territory. Back we go to Owen Richards. Now this has been a very good performance early on from the Flakers. But Leinster has shown they can score tries in the second half. They've really got to pull it out, all out of the woodwork as well. Prince Miles Williams said, oh, what a take. But he is all alone and completely wrapped up there low. Goes back in and it's a run from Robbie Henshaw, but he's lost it. Oh, Colin Nicholson, well played by the big number eight. He's, he's again, no one's helping out here. And it's turned over. Leinster get it back. McGrath, nice ball away. And it's Devin Toner who trundles upfield and the fake is very slow to take toll of that advantage. They go out wide, James Lowe wants to get away from Francois Valentine. One to beat here, but it's a good tackle. At the back, Chris Smith and Joshua Barrett doing the job together. Barrett goes back as this, another line break here for Robbie Henshaw almost goes through. And Leicester really are turning these tables early. Oh, big room here. It's a run away from Jack McGrath. Support out wide from Lowe. One to beat James Lowe, but no way he's getting past Zaza. Kukulska. And the hooker. Running out of space there, he shut James Lowe completely out of that opportunity. And now he saved the try, he's got the throw in to make, and the line out goes well. Eddie Gino goes back to Richards. 
who drives this one down the sideline. Of course, the wind going opposite direction now is playing it across to the opposite side. And here's a good little piece of offloading play. We'll start at the back. Look at this from Leinster. And it's there for a furlong eventually. But goodness me, they went through a lot of set of hands. Here's a pick and go from O'Brien. Pops back six. And here's another headshot run. And James Lowe is right on hand as well. It's a turnover, surely. How is that not a turnover? Ellie Sino was over that ball for an hour, it seemed like. Six to nice mark and through the middle will go Cronin. Chase for Williamson. Now Prince Williams. Miles Williamson does the defensive duties very well. McGrath goes to Furlong, steps inside and gets hammered. Good tackle again. Jim Gino doing defensive duties at the moment. McGrath out wide. Henshaw. Oh, that's nothing there from Ringrose. Almost to the 22 now, our Leinster. They're going to go short side. Scott Farty, first of many chances he's had tonight. Could be a turnover. Somehow Police. it's not at the breakdown. Somehow Leinster won't hang on. That is what we thought. He goes back deep down to Owen Richards on the sideline now. How's he going to patrol this one? He's tried to aim it nicely. Oh, that's Advantage. well taken in the back there from the fullback, Rob Carney. And it's Police. advantage to Leinster as well. Offside was the chaser. And no look to attack now with the confidence. They've Police. got a penalty on their back as well. O'Brien, short to Furlong, offloads nicely. Keeping it alive in the tackle. Oh, and what's the call? Let's go back, says the referee. Big blast to the whistle. And a huge opportunity now for Leinster to find a way back in this matchup. They've already wasted essentially 20 minutes now. His neither side have really had a chance. A kick from Sexton. Floats his way out on the 22. Scott Fardy, he's fairly happy with that attempt. And what do they do now? Leinster, they've got 23 metres to go. Sean Cronin. Oh, he's stolen it away. And it's turned over. Ball back, but quickly lost. Oh, that's well played, Leinster. Now they'll fire it wide. It's Evo Henshaw. Goes wide to Ringrose. Quickly it goes out to James Lowe. Who, oh, he waits beautifully. Back inside to O'Brien. O'Brien with support there. But good defence at the back there. And then, of course, was the big man, Prince Miles Williamson. The back three have defended exquisitely well here for the Flakers. Full line out. For the Flakers, they go to Smith at the back and it's quickly away to Joshua Barrett who wants to pummel this into touch and won't do it. Oh, that's close to the sidelines. Oh, he's untouched this time. One piece of miracle from Rob Carney was all he could manage. The second has gone astray and the kick for touch has worked wonders here for the Flakers. Almost to the last 10 minutes. Kukulska again. Chris Smith is the man. I tell you what, he's playing tremendously well. But Leinster, wow! Dominant at the breakdown there on Leinster. And they'll turn this ball over. Now they've got a score. The time is ticking. Through the backs it goes. And then Ring Ringrose to Sexton. Back inside from O'Brien. And he finds Luke McGrath. Nice. Scrum half. Takes it up to the 10 meter line. Henshaw. Outside, Cronin does very well. It's Furlong, who's got support out wide. And who is it, of course? Oh, danger from Anna Byrne. Oh, yes. Something back for Leinster. How about that inside dummy in the step? Magical work. I wondered, was he going to pass? Is he going to run? He just stepped inside. Henshaw did brilliantly. Threw to Furlong. This is it here, I thought. He's got options. He just dummied and went inside. And Joshua Barrett had no answer to that at all. Excellent try. Adam Byrne has been quite outstanding in this Leinster back line. Great work from Farlong just to pass it on. Not waste time. Just get it out to the danger man. And that's what he can do. Great try, Leinster. And they are back in this game now. They need this kick, though, from Sexton. That's going to be crucial for them. It's quite out wide to the right-hand side. Dying moments in the game now. Sexton. Shoots well, shoots straight. Oh, it's a floater. Boy, oh boy, that's a floater. The wind holding up in the night sky. But over it goes. 17 7 the score. They need an instant hit back now to Leinster again to really put this to the bitter end. Owen Richards not missing about. He gets it high and gets it deep down very quickly. Leinster going to have to go 80 odd metres here to get back in this game. And it's Ringrose who pops it out. Going to fly. No yellow cards in the second half from Leinster. And they break away straight away. Big chance for Ruddick. Ruddick needs soft float. He couldn't do it. There were three 
blue jerseys right there, ready to take the ball. No one's going to find it. Cronin does very well. Farlong back inside to Sexton. And again, it's there for McGrath. And they chop and change for Sexton. Gets hammered to ground. Sets it up again. Run a great offload. Now he's a run away from Robbie Henshaw. Oh, wow. Joshua Barrett takes no prisoners there. And that's pummels him into touch. A bit of a shoulder there. Probably lucky to get away with that. Time is ticking, however. And this shall be, I'd say, the last play of the matchup. Kukulski. Oh, it's his man at the front, Kelly Gino. Away to Richards. And Richards always stopped and just run out of ideas there to Owen Richards. Are they going to go for another try? There's no real advantage to this at all. Valera to McDonald. Out to Valentine. And Pierre Valentine, well, there you go. Captain says he's had enough. And Pierre Valentine puts it into touch. Again, a less than impressive display from the Flakers as they go into now the final two rounds in very much a good position. Well, that draw against Castres will forever haunt them as what it could have been in season number three. Leinster, well, their tough days are done. That's the last matchup they'll have against the subscriber side. Less than dramatic finish. They had to battle for a full 40 minutes of dominating the matchup to even get one try after the two tries in the first half to Jim Ali Gino and Promising Benawania was all they managed, but there was enough along with the penalty to Owen Richards and two conversions to boot. That 17 points to nil at the halftime break was all they needed. Adam Burns scored a stunner, but it was too long and too late in the second half. Sexton converted, but they just never seemed up to it. Apart from that one moment of brilliance from Mr. Danger out on the right, and that was all they really managed next to that. But I guess defensively, they were quite strong. And to the credit of Joshua Barrett, very, very strong at the back as well. Probably the Flakers' best player, I think, defensively. He shut down many, many Leinster attacks. We can have a look at how many line breaks they got. Hopefully, oh, look at that. That tells me a massive story. 2-2 two, two at halftime line breaks. That bottom line there, 2-7 to seven at full time. So 5-zip in the second half. It was all Leinster. And they had it all to do as well. But they could only manage one try. And again, back to what I was just saying. It was Joshua Barrett at the back for the Flakers that shut those attacks down. James Lowe made numerous line breaks, as did Robbie Henshaw and Gary Ringrose as well. Those guys were all through the Flakers' defence, but could not finish the job. It's the back three of, of course, Nick Pudawaniya, uh, Mars Williamson, and, of course, fullback Joshua Barrett was too good when they got into that backfield. They just couldn't find that support, or else this really could have been a massive chance for Leinster to steal the game away in the second half. Tied throughout the rest of the stats, though, possession, territory, Yellow cards, of course, two in the first half. That's really what cost them those two tries as well. So maybe they'll look back and say, discipline has let us down. We could have won this game on another day. But today, not that day. And the Flakers take four points into their tally as they look to take their way into the number two spot. Well, not quite enough from the Flakers tonight as they needed that bonus point to put a challenge into the All-Flakes. But even then, it would have required another 30, 40 points to have been a real challenge to that number two position. The All-Flakes and their bonus points are keeping them afloat at the moment. And that is where that point of difference comes. And same, I guess you say, for the Dragons who have two draws and no losses. The Cool Flakers continue that as well. Two draws and zero losses. But again, bonus points, a big difference. Amazing that the Flakers have only managed two bonus points in their nine matches so far. And of course, the uh, two draws as well. So really interesting standings at the moment. The Guardians are slipping back a little bit. They are, they are three points behind the Flakers uh, and four and five behind the All Flakes and Dragons. Montpellier still in a great position to attack, but they've got some tough matches in their final two rounds. They need to pick up the victory or two in those against subscriber sides. Of course, we have the Guardians' last two games against the Dragons and the All Flakes, which are subscriber clashes. So the Guardians could really suffer in these last couple of rounds. And a big chance for guys like Montpellier, to a lesser extent, Cast Trace, who have played their tenth match already, so have just one game to go. Um, the maximum points of them will be 27. So Montpellier is really the only side that could break into that top four um, with the last couple of matches remaining. So Dragons, All Flakes have one subscriber clash left. So you look at that table and say you've pretty much got your top five right there. The order, though, is where it's all going to change up. That sixth spot will be much competed for. It is Cast Trace at the moment who have a three-point buffer, but of course Leinster still have to play, and of course they've got two AI clashes, finals, matches coming, so they could potentially get up to 29, um, but they need to pick up the victories 
and you know, Exeter Chiefs Crusaders this season probably at the end by now. But that is it. Um, what we're looking forward to in the future. Yes, first game of round number 10. It's the Guardians of the Crypt versus the Celtic Dragons. Castro's picked up the win over the Lions already. Then we got the All Flakes away to Montpellier. That'll be a cracker. Scarlet's Flakers. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Scarlet's been pretty poor, so I expect there should be a bit of a thrashing for the Flakers there as well. The Scarlet's would be a huge upset because I'm pretty sure they're still winless as well. And in the final round, Dragons play the Lions. The Guardians against the All Flakes. That's a big clash. Um, then we've got Montpellier versus the Flakers for the final round of the regular season. So much to do, much to play for as we see the Scarlet's down the years. Winless still, four bonus points. Now the Lions have one, two for Saracens. Crusaders Chiefs with three, and then we see Leinster and Castres with four. But the draw is keeping Castres inside that top six for now. So that is it for round nine. Thank you for tuning in and watching. A bit of a, a stalemate of a second half there between uh, the Flakers and Leinster. But hopefully we see a bit more action from the Guardians versus the Dragons, which is coming up this Sunday for the premier matchup. Sunday night, Guardians versus Dragons. Be there for that one, 8 p.m. New Zealand time. Whatever that's going to be your local time, figure it out and get involved. It should be a cracker. I will see you there for that one. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Until then, take care.